All right, this is the uh, April 27th meeting of the Conway Board of Selectmen. Uh, this meeting is being recorded by Zoom. Um, and we will have it for later inquiry and Zooming. All right, let me read the agenda first so that everybody knows what we're gonna be doing. We have the minutes of the April 21st meeting. We have four warrants. We have uh, meetings attended by select board members, public comment on old business. Uh, we're gonna have the forest stewardship plan development presentation by Alex Barrett and Mary Wigmore. Uh, further discussion of the new Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership Grant, a review of the revised statement for re regarding the postponement of the town meeting of warrant timeline and tasks for the planned June 8th town meeting. Uh, new business, we have the Maya renewal proposal. We have an update on sending out the town report. We have a request from the Conway swimming pool to have a town mailbox. All right, we have an item not anticipated 48 hours in advance, a request by the uh, community preservation committee to add an item uh, to the CPC article on the warrant. That shouldn't be a problem. Uh, we have our town administrators update, concerns of the selectmen and mail. All right, those are the items on the agenda for this evening. Uh, first item, the minutes, the April 21st minutes. Has everybody reviewed the minutes? Yeah, a couple of uh, corrections on them just to the way with the, the select board meeting part of it, the, I didn't go to an ethics meeting. It was the governor's budget round table. Um, and then there was a sentence later on in that big paragraph um, where you used the word own when you meant to use the word town and it changes the meaning of the sentence. And I'm not sure everybody gonna, would assume, I don't know. So that was, I think you meant to use the word town and you used the word own. So it's at the bottom of that paragraph. But other than that, all good. Okay, are we all set with the minutes? I thought they were good, John, yeah. Okay, I'll make a motion that uh, with those amendments, uh, we approve the minutes for the April 21st meeting. We have a second. Second. All in yes. favor? Yes. Aye. Robert? Yeah. So all eyes. Okay. Yes. We have four warrants tonight. We have a vendor warrant of $98,910, a payroll warrant of $113,562, a production warrant of $28,147, a student activities fund warrant of thousand one hundred twenty six dollars. I'll make a motion that we approve those warrants. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Philip? Uh, yeah. Okay. Aye. Robert? Aye. And aye for me. Okay. Meetings attended by select members. Philip? Yeah, um, a couple of budget uh, related meetings for the school, one of which just came up um, over the weekend, which was um, Eversource finally came and sent the light the light bulb guy to the grammar school, um, which is what, the, what they, they did this to all the houses in the area a while ago too. And, but basically, they offer they offer at their own expense to swap out every single bulb in the building for their own super duper bulbs, and then they assess a savings. So I think this was requested like three years ago, but they finally came on Friday. Um, and, and basically they, they put all the bulbs that we had into a computer. They put all the bulbs that they're gonna replace in the computer. They put our electric bills into the computer and they say we're gonna save $8,000 and that they guarantee it, but then they wouldn't put the guarantee in writing. I found out later today. Um, but so I, I, I don't know what, what your, what you all have experience with, with regard to the uh, f definiteness of their number. And for like, 
we're looking to find budget savings. And if an $8,000 budget savings can be found on the school's electric bill, that would be wonderful. But if we say it's an $8,000 budget savings and then it's not a $8,000 budget savings, that's not good. Is that in the one year? It's an, it's, an est it's an estimate, Phil. Phil, is that in one year? That's every year. But wow. it, using, using the current electric rates right now, that's what it is for this year. <laughs> okay, it's an estimate. So right. it's a, it's a $46,000 value of light bulbs because they're even replacing the ones in the gym. Great. Um, so, uh, and they say it'll, it's a, and it's free to the town and free to the school. So, right. so uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and recommend that we do it then. So, but I, I don't know what number to take out from the budget for, for safety purposes. Well, right, well, well we, we, we don't have to decide that. Well, right. the, the school is gonna- Can I ask a gonna, question? Sure. Yes. Yeah, this is this is hope. Um, why would they give us something for free? Why is anything ever free in life? So why would what's what's in it for them? Yes, yeah, no, that's, that's part. Program. That's part of their. That's part of their efficiency program. It's part of the mass save program. But, but ultimately, ultimately, the ratepayers pay it. But yeah, all the ratepayers sure. across the, the state or their service area, and so um, we benefit from that. So it's called Mass Saves, okay. If you yeah. call Mass it. Save, they'll come to your house and do the same thing. There's a, little, there's a little taken out of your electric bill every month that goes into a fund that pays for those things. Yeah. Just Thank you. Because it's such a small amount. We pay for it every month on our electric bill. Okay, thank you. It's, so, not, for fr it's not for free. We're paying for it. Right. They're telling us they're not charging us for it. Right. So then that sounds like it's really something good then that, you know, we, we don't have to pay for it ourselves and, and we it will get to have some budget savings with no pain to anybody. And so that's good. Good. Any other meetings, Phil? Um, just uh, basically just beginning to get our heads around what the budget situation is still. So um, I wish there was as much optimism as you showed last week that Chapter 70 wasn't going to be touched. But, well, I, I would think that that would be the last thing they're going to touch, Phil. So. Yes. Uh, did you have anything? Uh, well, it was a short week, but last, last Tuesday when we had our last meeting, I talked about the fact that we had, we had uh, made a lot of changes to the ascertainment that we were sending off to Comcast for the franchise renewal. And uh, on, we spent a lot of time on Friday with the whole committee going over changes. And then they authorized me to uh, look at the work product that Bill did, the lawyer, and, and review it and make sure all of our changes were in there. And so all during the week, I was reviewing you know, the ascertainment document. And I think it was around Wednesday that we finally sent it out to Comcast. So it's all been sent out now and that's all done. And, and, you know, it's one more big step that we have to do towards the franchise renewal. Right. Okay. Great. Uh, I didn't have any meetings last week. Uh, public, public comments. Public comments. Okay. Next item. Um, I have a public forest. comment. Hi, Jan. Oh, go ahead, Jan. Hi. I don't know if we'll be allowed to make them later, but I wanted to talk about the um, forest service you have lined up. Okay, that's the next item on the agenda. Shall I hold on to it? Hold on I'd to it. I'd be happy to. I just didn't want to miss my opportunity. No, oh, no, no. Not, you always have an opportunity, Jan. Okay, I'll wait then. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the far, forest stewardship plan development presentation by Alex Bennett. Uh, Barrett and uh, Mary Wigmore. Alex, want to take it away? Let me, let me unmute myself here and it's uh so uh, hello everybody. I'm, I'm Alex Barrett with Longview Forest and uh, Mary Wigmore of Wigmore Forest uh, Resource Management is currently uh, battling technology and about to join us. Um, so thanks for having us here. 
Um, I'd sent around uh, an agenda uh, from, well, well, Tom had sent it around actually, but um, our general uh, purview tonight is to, to kind of give a, you know, just to first of all say thank you. It's, it's nice to kind of meet everybody uh, as, as personal as Zoom can be. Um, but just say, you know, thank you for choosing to work with us on this project. We're really excited about it and eager to, you know, hit the ground uh, running and so far have gotten really great uh, support and help from, uh, from Tom and from Beth in terms of just getting us in a good place to get started. Um, I'm going to give sort of a overview of the whole project pretty quickly because you all have seen our proposal and I, I don't need to spend a huge amount of time there, but you'll also notice that we have a little bit of updating on uh, some of the, the timeline as, as you all know, this is a very, uh, you know, we have uh, two more months here basically to do a, a pretty substantial process. And so we're gonna need to be very much on task uh, in order to make that work. So some, some of the dates have moved around a little bit from our initial proposal and, and we'll kind of review those. Um, I think Mary is here. Are you here, Mary? I am. I'm so sorry. I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> uh, All right, Mary. You, you made it. Um, <laughs> I'm here. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> um, it's uh, it's it's fun. It's it's fun to be uh to be a part of a. I'm I'm the treasurer in our village here uh, in Vermont, and so I, I spend a fair bit of time in uh, in 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 our uh, board of trustees, which is our version here, but. It's fun to be in somebody else's meeting. So thank you guys for, for running a good meeting here. Um, so the, the general time frame of the process, um, which is kind of is page two there of the, the agenda that I sent around, um, is you know sort of the end of April here um, is gonna be uh, just kind of the, the startup of things with a couple you know, initial, this, this meeting tonight where we're hoping to get a little bit of input from you all. Um, and then we're gonna be diving into a, a public outreach and kind of listening uh, and solicitation of input process that's really kind of the core foundation for the whole planning process moving forward. And so that's what we're gonna spend the majority of our time tonight on is kind of going over the, the outlines of that and hopefully um, you know, getting some good input from you all to help that process start on the right foot. Um, you know, in big picture, um, you know, this is kind of a, a two part process where we're going to, you know, engage the community as best we can under, uh, you know, the pandemic conditions as they are um, and, and pair that, you know, at the same time with uh, an inventory and kind of analysis process in the forest to, you know, get kind of two sets of, of information that are really going to guide the process going forward, which is sort of the the biophysical reality of the forest and what's there. And then, you know, the, the values and goals and, you know, what, what the community would like to see happen there. And that, that's a complicated process and uh, we're excited to be, to be working with it, working through it with you all. Um, so the, you know, back a little bit to the time frame and sort of communication expectations. Um, Mary and I are, are, you know, we, we have, you know, uh, full-time jobs as foresters, and this is a, a big component of our, of our work right now. So we're, we're very focused on it and trying to be as responsive as possible to, to everything. Um, the reciprocal of that is that, you know, we're going to need to be pretty tightly in, in pretty tight communication with you all to, to make it flow. Um, because, you know, as you all have discussed, the, the end of June deadline for, for pulling this together is, uh, you know, certainly achievable, but it's, uh, it's, it's going to require that everybody be on their game in terms of communication and in terms of sort of thoughtful approaches to a, a, a complex, long topic. Um, so with that, I guess, are there any kind of initial questions before we, we jump into kind of a little bit more of the first steps here? All right, somebody has questions. So, do you have anything? I, already, I have a question, John. But go ahead. Just point <laughs> go ahead, Bob. Okay. Um, when I when I look at when I look at the document that you sent us, and it talks about understanding the project, which 
I mean, to me, that's a good level to think about it. And, and you talk about fulfilling our role with the uh, Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership. And, and to me, that implies that we have a responsibility to do things that are being directed by the Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership. And that's not my understanding of the Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership. Um, you know, my, my view is we can do whatever we want and we join the partnership and we may or may not support various aspects of the goals of the partnership. But do you view that the Mohawk Trails Woodlands Partnership is putting responsibilities on us or on you? You, you see what I'm, you know what I'm asking? Absolutely. No, and I think. And, and, uh, and, wait, and let me be more specific. Okay. So. If we have gotten any feedback at all from the folks in Conway, it's a carbon sequestration is by far the most important piece of our forests, which means we don't view the things that you have in here, like timber stand management and, and maintaining trails and invasive plant work as being of primary importance. And they may be important, more important to the Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership than they are to the people of Conway. And so I'm just wondering who's responsible or who, who's putting pressure on the town of Conway from outside of Conway for us to do things or to have you form a, a plan that might not be what the people of Conway want. Does that make sense? Absolutely. And I think, you know, we're, we're very early in any kind of a planning process. And I think that, you know, Conway's, Conway's commitment to the partnership is as a partner. And, uh, you know, it's the, the commitment right now is to do an outreach process and put together a, a plan. The contents of both of those are, you know, you all as the, the sort of the client in this relationship is, you know, that's guided by you. Um, so I think, you know, your, your level of commitment will, uh, you know, I, I don't see this as a uh, sort of somebody else coming and telling you what to do. This is a, someone else coming and asking you what you would like to do. But I don't see climate sequestration anywhere in, you know, your list of fulfilling our roles, recreational opportunities, ecotourism, um, you know, wood products, income, which are the things you list. And, and I have not heard a single person in Conway say that is what they would hope for with our Conway forests at all. And, and what I'll tell you is our board has no dog in this fight. Our board wants to do what the people of Conway want us to do. And, 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 and anyways, and, 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 but there are a lot of people in Conway that are mad at us for joining the partnership. And, 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 and our understanding of the partnership was not that the partnership would be putting on pressure on the town to force us to do things that the people of Conway might not support. So, so I'm just, people will be very sensitive about this whole process about to what extent that's happening. So I wanted to just make sure you see that. Hola, do you have something? Uh, you're muted here. You're on mute, Priscilla. Apologize. There, there, there you go. go. You're, you're still on mute. So. Okay, there. So um, just to piggyback on that, you know, in your proposal, you did say that the inventory will provide a rudimentary basis for the assessment of the carbon stocks on the lands and the forest ability to store more CO2 into the future. What does that mean, a rudimentary? Because I think that's essential that we have a very full and complete assessment around carbon sequestration, not something rudimentary. And so awesome. are you able to do that? Um, so I think, okay. The, the short answer is that this is not a carbon verification project. Um, and it, you know, we're, again, we're, we're very early in any kind of stage of anything here. And I really, you know, the focus of, of tonight's information gathering and, and connecting with the, the select board and, and residents here is um, to hopefully kind of shape the outline of a community input process. And, you know, 
I hear from you, Priscilla, and from you, Bob, like really good input right now. <laughs> um, but I also want to not, you know, put the wagon in front of the horse here because we want, you know, the goal of this is to, to gather input from the town and to, you know, analyze that data, um, which will be, you know, the input from hopefully a lot of people because it sounds like this is a really important topic to everybody. Um, and so, uh, you know, I think I'd like to get into a little bit more of kind of what this process will look like and obviously incorporate your input as we go through it because I think, you know, the process itself is up for design and, you know, as efficiently as we can incorporate what you guys would like to see, you know, you're sort of the, the early shapers of this, of this process. And so that's really good. Um, you've also, you know, put out this proposal, solicited, you know, propose or put out the quote, you know, request, solicited a bunch of proposals and are, are moving forward with it. So to some degree, we, we sort of have the, the parameters of the project in place. Um, and obviously we're, we're going to bend them and make them work to, to you all. Um, but yeah, Mary, do you want to jump in a little bit here with the, the community outreach process? Am I audible? Yes. Hello? I'm being heard. Okay. Um, so first I want to address Barb Armstrong's question, who is putting pressure on you to do what Conway doesn't want to do. Nobody's putting any pressure on us, Bob. We're trying to fulfill the mandate as per COG put it out in <coughs> The RFQ, the request for quotes, and they were pretty detailed in that RFQ. Our proposal that was accepted and won the bid reflects the language of the RFQ. I have heard mention of your interest in carbon storage and accumulation just on word of mouth, talking to people. It was nowhere in the RFQ. It's something that I have experience with. I've worked with three towns in the valley, Holyoke, West Springfield, and Westfield, they are selling carbon credits right now on the California market. So I did put it in there. Um, Alex is right. The kind of inventory necessary to actually get your carbon credits verified is pretty detailed. It may exceed the mandate of this RFQ, but more importantly, nobody's putting pressure on us. What we propose as we move into the community out and hopefully we can do it the best that we can given this new reality is to accommodate all the community's voice, understand what you value in these forests, and then after collecting that information, move into the planning phase of the RFQ, basing our objectives and goals upon the information that we collect in the community outreach process. Does, does that make sense? Sure, that sounds, that sounds great. Uh, and uh, the goal of this project is not to come out with a, car, a, a carbon inventory. And, and I know that Priscilla mentioned it. And, and if, if it were possible to do that, we would love to do that. And it's an acceptable answer for you to say, for 20,000 bucks, we can't do that. And that's okay. But I, I wanna just make sure that, that that when the folks of Conway, if they end up saying our goal is to preserve all of the carbon that's been sequestered as much as possible and to manage the forest so it sequesters the most carbon, if that's the goal that they come up with, that you guys don't say, oh no, but the Woodlands Mohawk Trail is forcing us to do wood products or, or whatever that was in your document, because that might not be what the people of Conway want to do. No, I, I understand that, and, and that's a good um, place for me to jump off. Item two on our agenda was our community outreach process and what we proposed. Our, our timeline and our task list reflects clearly what we had presented in the proposal in response to the request for quotes. It seemed the only, the only logical way that I could frame how we move ahead. So we proposed to have two public forums, and one before the planning phase really begins, the management plan process or the stewardship plan process begins, before the, the inventory gets underway and the mapping, and that, and, and that outreach is so that we can um, understand your community's vision for these two forests. And we're getting a little sense of it this evening, at least for those present at this meeting. Right. And um, 
Yeah, and Alex Scott has the timing sheet, which was page two of the agenda. And our first process is we're, we're crafting a survey that we're going to try to distribute as widely as we can within the community. We've got a number of ideas for our survey um, delivery. Perhaps we can have it um, put online on your town web page or your town Facebook page. We could have um, a URL code in order to connect to it. We're unsure which platform we're going to actually present it on, either a Google Forms or a Monkey Survey. And we're having the questions now reviewed by some other professionals. And then the Board of Select People is going to review it also before we deliver it and launch it. And the intent of our survey is to understand how people use the woods now, the forest now. Um, if you um, have an awareness of sustainable forestry practices, they may not include timber harvesting. They may include preservation of refugia or letting young trees just mature and get larger. That's um, information we're trying to solicit from the community. So that's the, the, and we also are hoping to be able to present a hard copy, a, a written copy for people who are not as savvy with technology as others. We've discussed some options with Tom about that, um, an in-town delivery portal and then collection. So those, those matters are still to be finalized. But we do not plan to move into the planning, the real depth of the planning process, until we accommodate your input. It's my um, understanding of the essence of your Mass, um, Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership grant was that whatever goes on in those woods has to be brought out, it has to be community-based, driven by your towns. And that's, we're hoping to get at some of that in the survey, our first public outreach meeting, we're hoping to do use the Zoom platform and do the same thing. We're uh, brainstorming now about will it be a workshop format, a, a visioning format, uh, the process to do it in this <sighs> difficult, well, it's not difficult, but it's a different approach than we had considered going into the process. But at that first public forum, that's a place for you to be heard for you to give un, help us to understand how you see your forest going forward. Do you have a date on that? Um, we have a tentative date. Is that on your um, agenda, Alex? Is it? Yes. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Should be on the, on the second page. Yeah, what, you know, that's, we can just jump right to that right now while we're on it. You know, we, um, we're tentatively looking at like May 13th to 15th or somewhere in there. Um, but we wanted to get input from you all as like, you know, to make sure that May 13th isn't the, you know, apple blossom parade or something like that. Um, none of that going on. <laughs> no, it's the stuck in, it's the stuck at home parade. <laughs> <laughs> well then maybe we'll get like more people, uh, right? more people are pining. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, more importantly, I think we'd love to hear your comments and um, helpful input on timing. If we can launch the survey next week, what time window do you feel would be suitable to accommodate your community? You understand your town. You understand the people in your town. And so the outside dates to tie down are contingent upon the distribution of the survey and getting it out there, getting people thinking. So any thoughts on that matter? Now is a good time to um, bring those up. Tom, do you know Want when some the public next comment edition? yet? Go ahead. Are you ready? I, I just had one thing, one, one quick um, organizational note. May, May 4th is actually the next meeting of the select board. So I don't anticipate the survey would be going out before you got the feedback on the next call a week from tonight. Correct. Is that Tom? Correct. Yeah, that's Tom. Hi. Hi, Tom. That's correct, Tom. Would you agree with that, um, Alex? Yeah, that would be great. You know, we are kind of in the finalizing process right now, and we would love to hit 
publish on an online version of that after your all's review. So if that happened next Monday night, that would be ideal. Yeah. Okay. Um, put that on the agenda for next, uh, next week. Jan, did you have any comments on this? I do. If you don't mind, I'll take a few minutes. I'll try and make it quick. But sure. What I hear is that you haven't heard what residents value that. And I think it's uh, very much that residents don't really know what's happening. Well, I live on the boundaries of the town forest. And I use the town forest three to six times a week. I'm out there at least every other day, if not more often. I bike it, I walk it, I ride my horse on it, I snowshoe. It's an invaluable resource to us. And I believe that the people around me that don't, that, that use the trails don't know this is happening. So I have a problem with the very fast pace um, that's happening here. Nobody knows it's happening and I'm, I'm I'm sort of late coming into this, so I'm going to try and help and let them know it's happening as soon as I can. And, um, you know, one of my big concerns is, you know, I don't, I don't really know much about carbon credits, and I don't really care about making more money for the town because, I'm sorry, I'm the treasurer, I shouldn't say that, but... <laughs> The amount of money that we put on this is, in my opinion, very, very small, considering that the town's residents have forked out enormous amounts of money to preserve other things like, like, like uh, all the banks of the river. We put in $100,000 to divert the river so there was no erosion. We preserved uh, farmland so that a, um, a historic farm could keep operating without having the adjacent property sold. We spend tons of money on CPA to preserve this and that. And in our small town, we have, uh, how many acres is there out there? 100, 130? Is that about right? That's correct. Maybe one. In our small town, we have this very cherished resource that in today's day and world, we can't go out and walk on other people's property because it's forbidden, everything's off. You know, you, you can't go there. So this is all we have in Conway. And there are many, many people in this town that go out, that go out and enjoy it, that cross their paths every day. And I don't think they have a clue about all of it. And maybe there can be some good come out of it, but every time I hear forestry, I'm sorry to say, I like shudder because I think logging. They're gonna log it because it destroys the beauty of what we see every day. And I, I have a home that's made of wood. I understand that we need wood, um, but I just think our town is so small and we have this tiny little resource, for people to go out and, and, and especially in these days of coronavirus, you know, to go out and enjoy the nature and see the nature. It, if that gets logged, in this lifetime, I'm never going to see the beauty of it again. My kids are never going to see the beauty of it again. And um, I, another point I want to make is about, um, you know, logging isn't all bad. And it, it, it's true. There are some loggers that work better than others. But our town just recently let a logger pass through the state forest to out the Poles property. And they promised that they would be in and out very quickly. They've been there for... Uh, two, over two years, didn't leave the trails better than they were before. There's puddles, there's ruts, there were huge equipment out there. It, it's just it, it's too small to harvest. Um, okay, so back to my notes. Um, yeah, I just really want to stress, uh, there's also a very, there's several historic sites out there. So that town forest has our old town farm with the, the cemetery, the beautiful stone walls, everything out there throughout. Uh, very important to preserve, preserve that. And um, just want to reemphasize the point of uh, the people just don't know what's coming. That's it. Thank you, Jan. Um, Alex or Mary, you want to? 
There's some input on that. Um, I can take it first, Alex, if you don't mind. Um, who was speaking? Jan? Jan. I'm Jan Warner. I live on Waitley Road. Uh, I, I also work for the town. I'm the town treasurer and tax collector, I must admit. That's what I do. <laughs> nice to meet you. Um, okay. Some, uh, I understand what you say. I think my understanding of how, of what my and Alex's job is, is not to bring our agenda. We are, we're foresters. We are in the wood products industry. But this project, we're coming at it without that agenda. We're coming at it with how we'd really like to understand how you want to use your forest. As far as outreach, um, I, it's good to, un to hear what you had to say, that people don't understand what's going on. Some of our ideas for getting the survey out there and starting the dialogue, um, if you have any other ideas, I mean, we're thinking of using the web page. Um, Tom had crafted a list of stakeholders, people he felt that we could sort of contact and then perhaps expand the contact range from these individuals in town. And if you had any ideas to help us out, we're more than open to that because I agree with you. I see the success of this whole process contingent upon our, um, the amount of people that we can reach, the amount of people that we can hear from. We've got the skill set to go through and finish the second part of the second phase of the process, which is to complete for stewardship plans based upon that community accommodation, hearing from your, you people and what you feel is important. So I'm hoping that's addressing that somewhat, Jan. Please tell me if it isn't. I hope so. If you can reach those people, I'm trying to as well. Okay. Did uh, I'd like to. I'd like to throw in my two cents. Go ahead, Janet. 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 Um, yeah, I think this is great. I invited Jan and I shared the news of this with the Open Space Committee members. I think Michelle is here anyway. Um, and some other folks that I know, because the Open Space Committee have been, um, has made a couple of uh, attempts to assess the forest for recreation and other open space values. One of them that's important to a lot of us is trail connectivity. Uh, there is this state forest, some state forest land adjacent to the town forest. And we, I would like some, some help or some recommendations. And I hope your questionnaire will address this um, to encourage other people to use the forests. Um, We've, uh, I personally am particularly interested in habitat for some bird and other species, and some of them need uh, young forest habitat and also uh, a, a, a dense understory. So I'm hoping your questionnaire will address that. Uh, you, you know, we know that forests that are a uniform certain age, you know, grow up to be big trees, which is wonderful. And we certainly support carbon sequestration, but there are other, many other creatures that uh, could benefit from sections that are more to their liking. Uh, I'm sure you, Mary, know what I, what I mean. Um, and we can provide more information on that. Um, the Open Space Committee has also been concerned with invasive plant species and we uh, have made great success removing them on the town field, um, our, our South River Meadow. But we know, as you know, they, they creep up everywhere and it's easy for them to take over these invasive plants, which do not provide good nutrition for uh, wildlife. So those are um, some of the uh, issues that I wanted to to bring to your attention and, and hope those get reflected in the questioning questionnaires that you do. Thank you. Thank you so much, Janet. I do Go understand ahead, about Priscilla. The so the couple things that I want to say, I want to agree with Jan that I think this is moving much too fast. 
that people need to become educated and understand and need to get involved. And I don't know how you're going to run a Zoom meeting with maybe, well, how many are there now? There's 15, 16, 17, I don't know, 17 or 18 of us. I know other people are talking about other people who will come to that. I know other people who will participate in that. And I don't know how that is going to be very successful uh, as the only way um, to communicate or the way to communicate around this. I think it would take several sessions to really understand. I think there needs to be education and understanding about what sustainable forestry means. What does that really mean? It sounds really nice, you know? Uh, and we need a balance of, of information. We need to know about proforestation. And I understand Mary's absolutely right. You were not asked to do that. And that was my concern in my letter to the select board in, on uh, March 23rd, I believe it was, that this is not, you're going to get a forestry perspective and that's fine, but we have to understand that's one perspective. And there are other perspectives that we should be looking at as well. Um, and again, in this situation that we're under now, under you know, home stays, I don't think it does justice. Um, to the process that we really need to be in, <clears throat> really understand as a community and make decisions about. Um, and so I, th I think it's far too fast. I think um, that really there needs to be more education and information about all the options before you send out a survey. Because again, the survey is going to have lots of nice words. What do those words mean? What do they translate to? People need to be making informed decisions. I'd like to comment. Oh. Yes. Go ahead, Hope. Thank you, Priscilla. Can I be heard? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is Hope. I'm up at uh, 1490 Main Poland Road. And uh, I moved up here about two years ago from Amherst and I'm hearing words that are sending chills down my spine and making the hair on my, uh, the back of my, uh, whatever, arms stand up. And those words I heard so much during these so-called group dialogues in Amherst <clears throat> where people from the outside would come <clears throat> into town looking like they had some plan that would benefit the town. Words like dialogue, words like stakeholders, words like sustainable are all things that I learned were iron fists of authoritarianism wrapped in a velvet glove of pretty words. So I just have a few questions um, and then you don't have to answer them right now, but I feel very strongly about, about this. Um, so one question one, what interests such as corporations or companies will gain access to our forests here in Conway? Number two, will landowners be able to retain full ownership of their land? And more importantly, will they lose any rights that they have as owners of the land by signing on to this? And then I'd also like to know, will this affect our tax base in any way by taking land off or putting it on to the books that now be, may be protected by forestry easements or otherwise play with our, our tax base? And finally, uh, is this related to a climate change agenda, you know, on the biggest level? Because to finish up here in Amherst, a lot of things that came in looking like they were coming from the county or from some well-meaning, friendly-faced uh, semi-government organization ended up being real Trojan horses and people just did not know the questions to ask as Priscilla was saying. Um, so I have a lot of other questions I could ask about this, but I'll leave that, uh, I'll leave it right there for now. Thank you. Um, Hope, could I respond yes. to some of the questions? I hope my name's Mary Wigmar. Um, let's see your first question. What corporate or otherwise 
interest will gain access to your forest. I that I would say none. None based on my understanding of the FERCOG request for proposals and our mandate in this process. I would say none. Uh, will owners retain full ownership or lose rights as owners by signing on to this? Your town's already involved in the Mohawk Trail Woodland Partnership. This process is specific to community-owned land, not, not private. So I'd say um, no owners would lose ownership or any rights that are attached to their lands. And will it affect your tax base? Again, it's community, public-owned land, so it's not taxed already. I don't understand the climate change agenda question. Really, what our process, what we're trying to accomplish is understand how your town to use um, the forest land that you are responsible to take care of. It's a process of trying to educate you about options and then trying to understand how you want to take care of the land as you move forward. And that, that's it. That's the end of the agenda. The planning process would be written in a, what I like to call adaptive management style, whereby if things don't work, you can change the plan <laughs> down the road. It's not set in stone. It's not a covenant in any way attached to these properties. That, that's my attempt to answer your questions. And I do appreciate your opinion and, and where you come from. Thank you. Is there any other general comments about our presentation thus far? So, John? So, I, yeah, I just have a couple. Of, so, I'm, this is Phil Cantor, I'm Conway Selectman. Um, so, the, the uh, uh, first of all, my suggestion to Alex and and, uh, and, and you, you know frequently asked questions section might be good because I think a lot of the questions that you heard are the questions that everybody that hears about this has. Um, the the other thing is that um, yeah yeah like I, the the requ the request for proposals might not have been as uh, 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 focused as like we, in retrospect, we would like it to be right now. But when we opened up the four proposals and we saw yours, it was that sentence, that last sentence in your paragraph 1.3 that the, our inventory will provide a rudimentary basis for the assessment of carbon stocks on the lands and the forest ability to store more CO2 in the future. Be because your proposal was really the only one, one of the reasons why we selected your proposal was because it was, one of the only one, or the only ones that really uh, spoke to that concern of ours, even though we may not have spoken about that concern in our RF, RFQ. If that makes any sense to you, um, it, it does make sense. And um, the way that I think, right now, you can't think about forest or the future of our forest without thinking about what are they doing to pull carbon in. So I appreciate what you you know, what you've just told us. And I, I apologize if I, I'm not trying to deter you from using the data um, to get a sense of what carbon is out there. There are formulas you can work into software programs that take, um, that can compute the volumes in tons of carbon. Um, I think what I initially misunderstood was there is a formal process that is expensive to get yourself verified to work on the in the carbon market. Right. But my deeper under, my deeper understanding of the concerns of your community are there's a contingency and a strong one from this evening's meeting that would like to see their forest, their community forest, let um, be allowed to grow and just pull CO2 out of the air and do what it does naturally. So. Right. Certainly accommodating that value into the management plan and using the data that would be collected within the economic framework of our quote it is possible. Do, do you agree, Alex? Yeah, absolutely. And without, without getting into the, the deep weeds of, uh, you know, carbon, uh, carbon science, which is a, a deep pool, um, you know, our inventory will certainly, you know, a lot of things are based on kind of 
baseline assessments versus regional standards of carbon and whatnot. And so our, our inventory will, will provide that and it'll be a really nice window into that world. Um, and as Mary says, like, whether your goal is to participate in a, in a carbon market or simply to know that your forest is, you know, accumulating a lot more carbon and it's based on this foundational number, like that's going to be really helpful moving forward. Okay. And then, you know, my, my other question just to both of you is just sort of, you know, you talk about having good data and wanting a, you know, a survey and everything. And just, just as someone with a passing familiarity in st public statistics, public use of statistics, the, <clears throat> the only good data is randomized data. And, uh, you know, and, and, and when we're in the position where I, uh, no matter how you put it, how you put it, even, even if you, you know, the web links, whatever, you're still going to be having people self-select to participate, um, which by definition sort of makes the data less reliable. Um, so I, that's my observation. Uh, this, this, this is Tom. Uh, just so you know, there, there will be a piece in the Conway Currents coming out um, on uh, – on or near April 1st, um, I'm sorry, May 1st, uh, about this um, and urging people to get involved. So everybody will get that in the newsletter. Right, and I mean, you know, my, my thinking on that is that, that people, people hear this and they, they immediately flash to logging. And that, when I read this, I don't see, I, I don't see logging, I don't hear logging in, in this, but, um, but uh, yeah, yeah. So I, that's. Uh, I mean, that seems to be the, the consistent initial concern of everybody that hears this. Logging in, in, in our in our formal plan, logging was there. It was it was to you know maximize. It was to log it and make money for the town. That was the plan. Bad plan. Well, it, that's why people people are saying. Are we going to do that again? And it always uh, seems to lurk in the background of the fancy forestry scheme. Logging right there. Well, and it's being done by, by foresters who are associated with loggers and makes people concerned. No offense, Alex, honest. Yeah. <laughs> none, none taken. I, I, I spend a lot of my world uh, explaining different, different roles in forest management uh, consulting processes. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll, uh, uh, real short, but we are looking for other grants in which we will be pursuing a, a deeper understanding of, of the climate mar of the carbon market and how we might participate and using the, the data that we hope that you guys might start to capture as the beginning of that. And so we, we, we're not, we didn't go into this with the expectation that you would get us into that market and we understand it's very expensive. And, and anyway, just... Bob, could I say something? Absolutely. Um, right. uh, I believe you were at the presentation that Bill Minow did at the Hitchcock Center about a year ago, um, in which he, he had a whole slide presentation, and he said that uh, Massachusetts, Western Massachusetts specifically, has some of the most carbon dense forests, forest in the entire country right now because of, uh, around that age that they're starting to be really mature trees and the mature trees hold a lot more carbon than young trees so the the most um, carbon sequestration can be uh, accomplished by allowing your old trees to continue to grow and not cutting them down um, and i've done a lot of studies of, you know carbon sequestration in forests and it seems to have half of it more than half of the carbon that's sequestered from trees in the forest is, car is uh, held underground in the roots and the communities that exist in the soil so um, you know the best way to sequester carbon is not to cut, cut the forest I, I think that some people may be in carbon sequestration as a, some kind of for logging, and that's the opposite of the truth or the, or the 
proper sequestration would allow the forest to continue to occur and to um, selectively maybe cut, but not um, not really a logging thing, maybe just um, to um, increase the health of the forest and generate some trees here and there, but would, it probably wouldn't be financially lucrative a uh, way to properties. Oh, can you can you mute your microphone? Yeah, Hope? yeah. Hope, can you mute, please? Oh, oh, I guess I have to hit this button. Sorry about that. Yeah. Okay, so that's basically, you know, my two cents. Um, uh, C Cynthia, we can't we can't hear you. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah, can you can you speak a little louder? Okay. Um, I think that. Um, you know, I'm pretty much done with my point. Just that we, can you hear me? No? Uh, now I can. You can now? Now I can. It was pretty hard before though. Okay, okay. Um, so did you hear my point at all? about uh, Only yes. random bits and pieces of it. Okay, can you hear me consistently? I won't, I will try to keep my computer where it is. Um, You're coming in very, very faint. Okay. Let me see if I move. Maybe if I'm closer to the. Is this better? Mm. No. Being closer to the Wi Fi doesn't help, but having your mouth closer to the computer helps. All right. So, um, I went to a presentation that Bill Moomau did at the Hitchcock Center about a year ago. And one of the key takeaways of that presentation was that carbon sequestration is, is done by um, letting the trees grow and that older trees sequester far more carbon than young trees, contrary to what most people perceive. The young trees just, they, they continue to, you know, add carbon, but so do the old trees, and the old trees kind of have a head start. Most of the carbon is sequestered in the roots and the soil, not in the what's above the ground. So it really pays to have old trees with gigantic roots and gigantic fungal networks that, you know, that keep more carbon um, in the forest. So to keep, to uh, uh, enhance the carbon sequestration of our forests, we would let them grow, not harvest them for timber. Um, any cutting that should be done would be a maintenance thing for the forest, for the health of the forest, not for making money from log or logging and timber sales. So, um, you know, that's really my point is that, a really good forestry management wouldn't be primarily to produce timber sales. That wouldn't be a, a carbon sequestration scheme. I think we're getting a very Thank consistent you, message here. Well, you, you okay. are just, uh, right. Do you have any other comments on this subject just, right now? Can I just uh, pop, pop I just in. want to know what Hope is eating. And what do you have? Oh, <laughs> I, I just want to boy, I just want to, maybe be the minority voice here for diversity and consider consideration of uh, native creatures that we hope to continue in the future. And they don't, and that will not happen if all you have is um, large, large trees. So while, while the, you know, 100% carbon people are making the mo most noise here tonight, um, I, I hope I, I'm, pretty convinced that you will hear some other voices for diversity. Janet, I don't think that's inconsistent, but I think that people are expecting that that kind of forest is going to be being created in the state forests that are within Conway that are being heavily logged. It's not that we don't have any, any diversity of forests in Conway. We have no control over what the state is doing and they're logging their forests. And the, go, on, go ahead. We're free not to log ours. I, I, I'm, go on. I'm, I'm confused about the um, perceived conflict between 
diversity and old growth forest. I mean, an old growth forest would have the most diversity and the most individual um, varieties of. Um, well, let's wait for let's wait for the uh, professionals to educate us some on that. I look forward to that, Alex and Mary. What you can enlighten us about about oh, diversity. I from what, from what I know about proper forest management, I think it, it would take into consideration all the views that have been, been okay? It, it's a combination of all these things done in balance. Okay. That is, a, this is Mary. That is a succinct definition of sustainable forestry practice, where that you look at the entire ecosystem. Right. You look at yes. the microbiota in the soil, you look at um, maturing large size older trees, you look at the habitat conditions, and you try to weave together a stewardship, a forest caring plan that encompasses the full range of values. And we try to inform the, the, the planning process with the recent, most current science on all of the issues. My understanding from reading Dr. Mamu's material and other people's is that it's still, it, the conclusions are still being drawn on what is the best forest to both accumulate and store carbon. But um, I really appreciate hearing from the, the people that are here tonight. It's giving me an understanding of, of your community. And again, I want to repeat, we don't have an agenda here. Our agenda is to follow the mandate of your RFQ. I feel, I feel that it might have been better presented about the carbon, but any forester that's, that's current and, and working in today's climate understands the need for resiliency and enhancing the carbon stored scourge and accumulation capacity of a growing forest at this time. So we had planned, as our quote had said, to incorporate it in our thinking. Um, I'm, I'm curious who had mentioned the statistics comment about randomization. We are, we are going to try to get a, as large a, a, a sample a number as possible, and our, our result would be, uh, is that Tom or? Philip. Philip. Oh, Phil Cantor, okay. Uh, it, we would be um, presenting and analyzing, you know, qualitative data. It would be like the percentage. We're, that's why we're trying to reach as many people as possible to hear what really the thinking is in town. And if you have any ideas on that, Phil, it sounds like you have a little bit of a math background that would be really useful. Um, as I think it was maybe Bob or Tom suggested or mentioned, we are going to have an article in the current Conway Currents that talks about our survey, talks about more information would be coming once we understand the, um, how we'll deliver it and how we'll collect it. Um, for us, efficiency is, is, is important, but we need to work with whatever modality is most effective within your, your town with the people who live there. Um, some of our ideas thus far are, you know, having it on the town website. Um, Tom at, once, at one point um, spoke about, and please correct me if I'm inaccurate, Tom, maybe having some, a, a pickup point outside of town hall, but that didn't seem ideal and a place they could drop them off. I've been trying to price out ways of perhaps mailing some or setting up a, a phone number, like a Google phone number that people could call, that we could work through it that way if that's the best way to do it. Our survey is going to have some educational material in it, at least definitions of the terms and concepts that you will encounter in the questionnaire to give, to give a little bit of um, background and useful information. And I think that covers our approach. If anybody has any ideas to help us with that, we are very open. And do you have anything to add, Alex, on that piece? No, I think you, you covered it well. And Phil, just, you know, uh, of course, this is not a randomized trial of anything. This is a attempt to get as many people to give us their opinion as possible. So it's obviously uh, weighted to those who show up. 
-hmm. Yeah, I mean, the, the Conley Currents are really is a good idea. I guess the, the only other thing that I sort of, a, a thread going through a lot of people's questions was just sort of the timeline. And, and my understanding is that there are sort of reasons for this condensed timeline. And um, could you please just address that for the people that don't know about it? Because numerous people questioned it, so. Um, do you want me to tackle it? I think Tom might be useful there too. But um, it's my understanding that the town was um, awarded a grant from the Massachusetts Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs in order to launch this process of a community-driven, community-based forest stewardship plan, management plan. And it was to have two phases, the, the public outreach collection of your, your thoughts and values, like a visioning process, if you will. And then the second phase of the project was to complete a forest stewardship management plan. And the, the grant coming out of Boston is contingent on the fiscal year, which closes June 26th, or the end of June is when the Commonwealth's fiscal year closes. Monies that aren't spent in that window will be reabsorbed into the budget. I do believe FERCOG has been working on extension. I have heard nothing further on that. So we have been proceeding as if you would not be granted an extension. I do know the governor's been giving some extensions on other areas that have to do with grant process, specific deadlines for taxation. So uh, I, it may still be a feasibility, but that is my understanding of the, the window, the tight window. And do you have anything to add, Tom, or anyone from Conway? That's, that's good. No, that's, uh, I, I think I think next step here is to get us a survey by uh, next Monday for our meeting, okay? And then we can we can take it from there. But our next step is to get a survey for next week. Mayor Alex, right? Yep, correct. One John, more tiny little comment, may I? Yeah. Go ahead, Jan. Yep, I just think this town has always had some issues in reaching all of its residents, and we have limited internet services. We have a, a little newsletter that some people pay attention to, but it's difficult to reach everyone. And the, the real only way to do that is a mailing. And it costs four to $600 to mail a card or a letter. And it reaches every landowner or homeowner in town. Uh, it costs less than that bulk mail. Yeah. Um, Jan, is that, um, and someone just interjected bulk mail is even less that's my understanding i have been looking into that been pricing that and 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 trying to figure out that as a process um the postcard is you know limited space i guess that may be a, a way to engage people in then obtaining the survey somewhere um any ideas on that on a delivery point would be very useful to us i like the the mailing i i had put it about that too about 500 i I was um, basing it on the Mass GIS tax base layer for actual residents in Conway. And my yeah. count was somewhere near maybe 780 or something like that. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I just know I mailed 1,200 tax bills, so that's what I estimated it on. Somewhere between a, a, a postcard and a letter is four to 600. All right, thank you all. Let's uh, move on to the next item on the agenda. John, can I ask one more question, please? Yeah, go ahead, Bob. Uh, so, so date-wise, and I thought Phil might get to this when he talked about dates, there are people who are interested if you have any plan for somehow like taking people for a hike in the forest or for a way for people to go into the forest and see, you know, see what Jan sees when she's there. Um, and, and, and now and now with Corona, I don't know how we're going to do that, but uh, I'm just wondering if if you have a thought on that. Um, do you want to take that one, Alex? Or I think I think he's addressing us. <laughs> um, I mean, I think under uh, under not coronavirus scenario, we would be hosting a series of pretty awesome woods walks to look at stuff, um, and. To some degree, we will have to try to pull something together that will be 
you know, attempt to get some of that, whether it be via, you know, me walking around the woods with a video camera telling everybody what I see and posting that somewhere uh, or, uh, you know, engaging with people to, you know, solicit via, you know, Facebook or Instagram or one of these, you know, cool platforms that we can get input from people, but, you know, getting people as much a tour as possible. Um, or a I, set of instructions. If you could tell people, go here, you know, th this is how you get in. These are the important things to look at. Uh, yep. And there are, you know, there are amazing tools that we use on a daily basis with a lot of our, a lot of our, our landowners that we work with that are, you know, smartphone based and you can go to a point in the woods and click on it and it'll show you a picture and it'll tell you what you're looking at and tell you why it's important. Um, so, you know, provided we don't have, you know, 30 people trying to go to the same point and violating some social distancing, right. I think that could be really, really wonderful. Thanks. Um, this Priscilla, is Mary. One more comment, last comment, Priscilla. I just wanted to say that um, I think it's important in the questionnaire, whatever you do, Bob mentioned there are two state forests slated for being logged in this town and that any consideration of what's important to us, what do we want to see happen in our lands, might also depend on what's happening on those lands. So we can't be making decisions without paying attention to what's going on around us. Okay, Th thank you all. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, Mary. Appreciate you being here tonight and appreciate all the input. Uh, next item on the agenda is a further discussion of the new Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership Grant. Janet, what do you have on that? Uh, I, I about out last week because our trail connectivity uh, idea was is a no-go, and so that's all I have. <laughs> so, this John, this is where this is where this is where we're turning towards the uh, focus on the Williamstown uh, led project, um, to which which their study uh, uh, recommends the use of this would recommend this the use of this grant to do a an initial feasibility study, much as I dislike that term. Um, the, uh, uh, but that's, that's sort of the next step. I think the, the, that we had a deadline of three weeks. We sh but basically we need to form sort of a subcommittee or a committee or delegate the responsibility um, of f filling out the application for the next phase of this grant. Um, so uh, right now there is nobody, uh, that has stepped forward uh, to to do oh, I so. I thought you were going to do that. Yes. Okay. I'll do it. I'm the one. So uh, yeah, I need help. Yeah, I thought a, it was an, exist, an existing example. Of, Look, what's that? Are you going to coordinate with Tom on this? Yeah, or with Peggy, you and Peggy, or something. Well, that was the other thing that Peggy. Peg, remember from from two weeks ago when we spoke to her, she was going to supply us with additional information. Then last week, Tom had said that uh, that he had le called and left a message for her. So I, I expected that we would have the more into the scope of the work of the Williamstown project, the additional documents related to that. All right, Philip, will you coordinate with Tom, and we'll talk about this next week? Uh, well, we have I, I believe so. We have th Tom. Is that right? We have three weeks to as, for a deadline. Yeah, I think it's May 16th or 18th, maybe. All right. Um, yeah, and and it would be, I you know, Peggy would be the person as she has all the experience with this stuff. Right. So Does really, I'd just be... Your call? I'll, be, I'll be right down. Or, or... I'm sorry? Did she ever return your call? I... Um, I think I'm missing something here. Um, I, I did not call her about this. I got the Williamstown study and forwarded it to the select board last week. That was right. the end of it as far as I was concerned. I'm waiting for, for um, you know, I'm waiting for someone like you to say, yeah, you're, you're interested in moving forward with it. And, and uh, she is definitely the person to do that with. I think she's going to wait to hear from us as to whether we want to go forward with something like Williamstown. Yes. Yes, I have an interest. I mean, I, I, Bob, I take it that you have an interest in this too? Bob, you're on mute. Yes. <laughs> I can say yes. 
All right, Bob, why don't you and Phil and Tom go okay. together and, and move this forward if we're going to do something with it? Great. All right, good. Next item on the agenda, review revised statement regarding postponing the town meeting. Tom, what do you have on that? Hang on, just writing up the last item. Um, I, I, uh, in the process of making the changes requested last time, I did some more wordsmithing. I don't think any of it was particularly um, substantial. I think it's a little bit better than it was. Um, I did have it originally as a Board of Selectmen document to be signed by the Board of Selectmen. Um, I don't know that... Um, I know Bob's in Falmouth, so maybe it would be better if it just went out under my name. But but maybe maybe we don't even need to sign it. Maybe we just have your names and um, without signatures. That's that's fine. That's fine. So, yeah. So so I I send out the revised copy. If no one has any questions on that, uh, that's good to go. Well, the, the only, my only question about that, Tom, is sort of that that June eighth at the grammar school is never going to be able to happen. I mean, I, don't worry about that, Philip. It's six weeks away. All right, we have plenty of time to decide where we're going to have it. Right, but we're still using it's that in lines and whatnot. All right. Well, yeah. I mentioned very specifically that it might be further postponed. Right. That is what it, I'm just stating the facts of the case. That is when it was postponed to, and it may be postponed again. I don't know what else to say. Yeah, one one of the things that that came up this week in one of the con was, was the the education commissioner, the DESE commissioner Jeff Riley, instructing schools to come up with plans for the fall. To uh, if students come can come back in the fall, there's plans that that schools have to come up with to eliminate the use of the gymnasium and library and cafeteria, things like that. So I mean, even in the fall, we're not going to be able to use the gym. All right, Philip. We have six weeks to figure this out. All right, mm -hmm. Tom. Let's send that out. We don't need signatures on it. Okay. So the plan is for that to go out with the town report, right? In lieu of a warrant, right? All right. Any any comments on that, Bob or Philip? So that means we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna pay extra an extra four or five hundred bucks to send the warrant out in a later date. That's what we're gonna do. Yep. It doesn't cost that much bulk mail. Yeah, let's combine it with a woodland survey. <laughs> All right, uh, Tom. Yeah, let's get that out. Our next item is the discussion of the warrant timeline, tasks for planned. Uh, June 8th town meeting. Tom? Uh, I sent around some uh, general thoughts about the budget, some uh, analysis of what happened after the last, after the Great Recession in 2008-2009. It, uh, it's got several tabs. One of them says, you know, it talks about, you know, if, if, if revenues went down as much as they did during that, um, what we could expect over the next year or two. Um, and I ended up with the, uh, with the observation that if we use the general stabilization fund and our free cash, which would mean postponing some of the free cash items until uh, the following year, um, we could we could make up that difference. Right. Yeah, that, that would be uh, a strategy. We'd, we'd dump some of the capital items and supplement the budget with uh, stabilization and free cash. And I'm, uh, I'm, I'm just going to note here that we had had uh, a little bit of a tickle of interest from the Community Preservation Committee about possibly having an extra item on the agenda on, on the warrant, and that's now been withdrawn. So we no longer have that, that uh, item that wasn't anticipated, and we no longer have the question about opening up the warrant again, unless, 
That's I mean, it, it, it's always possible for for a non you know a non budget item, I would say, but but not for. Uh, uh, and anyway, I just urge you to look at those um, those budget figures. Uh, we're and and you know I work backward um, from June eighth. Remember, whenever you want to have the town meeting, in order to get the warrant out to people, we have to make the decision at least three weeks, preferably four weeks in advance. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, we would have to pull the trigger for a June 8th town meeting on, on uh, May 18th. Um, it, it would be um, much easier on everybody if we could have a town meeting this fiscal year. Maybe it can be out on the ball field, um, but that is weather dependent because we're not going to get a tent big enough to fit over everybody um, who's six, sitting six feet apart from each other. So, um, I, if, you know, my, if we can't do it on June 8th, then I would suggest uh, scheduling it for uh, the weekend of the uh, 20th and 21st with with Saturday as Saturday the day the and 20th. then Sunday Saturday, Saturday the and then 20th. Sunday as a rain date and then if the whole weekend were rainy we could do it on the 27th or 28th and still be done by the end of the fiscal year that would right. give us a couple of extra right. weeks I like um, that and so so I'm just you know that's something that I'm just putting out there now now in order to do that we would still have to get the warrant out um, by, uh, you know, we, we'd have to pretty much get it out next week. No, I'm sorry, not May. No, uh, I, I'm, a, I'm a month, month ahead of myself here. We, we'd have to get it out either the, the last weekend in May or at the very latest, the first weekend in June. So um, between now and then, we have to figure out what we're going to do about the school budgets. Um, and again, it, it is, in one way, it's very simple to say, well, let's just authorize the full funding, and it will come in something under that, and we'll be fine. Uh, what that does is it kind of artificially raises the tax rate. Uh, and my argument for that not necessarily being as bad a thing as it might sound is that that will keep the tax rate steadier from year to year. So it doesn't drop substantially when we're, um, you know, in the throes of whatever economic mayhem this throws us into. Um, and then bounce up again the year after that as as we kind of make up for lost ground uh it, that's a that's a consideration for for you guys um but again it makes sense to me to authorize the school the school funding rather than waiting conceivably four or five months for the state to pass a budget an fy21 budget um and have us go on on a, a really not not a great plan of one twelfth FY twenty budget every month, which is actually a minimum because they recognize that some of the payments are front loaded in the fiscal year. So um, it, it it'll be somewhat fiscally chaotic if we do that. I would prefer to have a budget by the end of the fiscal year. Absolutely. I agree. And, and certainly the reason we picked the June 8th date was because it was in the 30 day period that we had from uh, May 11th. It was a 28 day extension. Yep. I like yeah. the idea. I like the idea of we're, we're going to, we're going to have to, to, to further extend that. And I like the idea of the, um, the June 20th Saturday date. So in, a, in another meeting or two, we will again extend.
to that June 20th date. And like Tom said, that gives us, if it's a rain date, that gives us some time to get the budget done by the end of the year. So I mean, I, I like I like the dates too. I think you know, I think this is the year if there if there ever is one to to lower the tax rates if we can, rather than keep them high, even though it makes sense from a fiscal planning and from a long term perspective, and for the ability to spend in the future, et cetera, et cetera. I understand those arguments, but. Um, the depth and the breadth of this uh, depression, economic depression, and 25% unemployment and everything else, people are just really hurting. Um, so, I mean, it, it, yeah, that's that's that. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll consider all of this. Tom, can, uh, I have a question. Uh, do you know what's happening with, I think it's Deerfield and Sunderland and their request to the school to cut their budgets? has is the school is the school doing that phil or i'm not sure who the right person to ask is yeah as of now, as of now no the school hasn't done that um there's sort of a broad agreement that is kind of premature but the school is planning is making plans and and in particular each of those towns have requested us the similar request of their own elementary school um so you know as well as frontier so um, so they, they, they're, they're drawing up lists of program and services to sacrifice. And, um, Are we going to have a four town select board powwow to talk about this? I mean, yeah, the, the, the thing about that is that our individual school issues are, are, are separate in terms of the, the, our local elementary schools. Right. But so, at least for frontier. So for the, for the frontier thing, the, the, you know, ha having an individual, the, 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 you know, there is a budget, there is a legal body responsible for the budget. That's the Frontier Regional School Committee. Um, the select board, I'm always game to talk to other select boards. I think it's always beneficial. But, um, you know, we can't, we, as select boards, we don't get to order budget changes of the Frontier budget. We can... Well, recommend them seriously to your school but committee. We're all going to have to agree. What's that? We're all we, going to have to agree. Yeah. Right. And the, I, the know, town I, is, I think the general consensus is that as the picture clarifies, there's going to be a general consensus about what to do about it. Um, that things are going to become more obvious. Um, that, uh, you know, I, you, 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 you hope not to hit the panic switch too early and make sacrifices that you regret whatever but um at the, the actually like putting that stuff on the chopping block is is very complicated and requires multiple consultations with multiple stakeholders uh um just within that institution so but that's that's a whole thing like you don't want to you you know you, you don't want to just decide what positions will be cut without sitting down with your unions to talk about that because you don't want the process to trigger unfair labor practice claims. So. All right. Uh, next item. Uh, the Meyer renewal proposal. Tom. Uh, I sent out the uh, proposal. It's somewhat less than I had budgeted. So um, if we if we keep the insurance budget, which is one of the ones that I had slated uh, to uh, to leave uncut um, with with along with debt service and things like that, um, it we're it it fits. It's fine. It's pretty much what we expected. So I'd, I'd recommend uh, approving it. All right. Any other questions on that? Bob, yeah. Fill up. Yeah. I mean, I. Um, I would have liked to have seen sort of the correspondence from them and just sort of a, a greater understanding of why the amount is what the amount is. Yeah, well, it did. It certainly went up and we knew that was going to happen mostly because of that one workers comp case. Um, that's that's the big change and that's the big reason. And, and I, I did go over that in, in the budget presentation. Yeah, so um, 
So, I mean, I, I, I'd like to sort of take a look at what they sent us and to sort of get a greater understanding of that, if I could come in and see that file. Um, sure. I'll find it and leave it out. All right. So, Phil, do you want to see that before we vote on it? If I could. Can we wait one week? All right, we'll hold it. We'll hold the vote up until next week. All right, thanks. All right, Tom. Uh, update on sending out the Tom re town report. Uh, Lisa, did you have anything on that? Lisa, you're you're on. Are you on mute, Lisa? Can't hear you. So we yeah, when she tried to get on on her phone, there was feedback. Um, well, as I understand it, the town report is almost ready to go out, so it should be able to go uh, within a week. And going with it would be the um, the announcement about uh, the town meeting postponement. So we're 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 about ready to to send it off to the printer. I think there's there's maybe one more proofing or something like that. And Lisa's How about your forestry plan in that too? <laughs> yeah. So we, we the 2019 to town report. <laughs> All right, oh, so to prove oh, it that. more time, and then it's going to the printer. Yeah. So it, it's it's almost ready to go out. We, we took a little extra time with it because we had the extra time. Okay. All right, so you're talking about next week? Uh, yeah, yeah, I think so. All right. Uh, what's this request from the Conway Swimming Pool to have a town mailbox? Uh, I did receive a, a request from the Conway Swimming Pool to have a mailbox uh, and to use our um, address for their mailing purposes. What, what was the motivation for that, Tom? Uh, I believe that the person who's been receiving their mail, their treasurer, is no longer doing it. All right, well, do they have another officer who can receive their mail? I don't I'm a little know. I'm a little confused uh, as to why why they would ask us to to receive their mail. They have other officers that could receive their mail, or they have post office box at, at our post office. Why would they ask could us we have one post office box in town hall for miscellaneous town committees? It's not a town they're, committee, they're a and no, we don't. Bob. Yeah. Or miscellaneous town associated committees. Well, uh, that would be up to them to set up. So, uh, you know, this, this is a small favor to ask of us, I think. And I, I understand that, you know, we can't accommodate everybody similarly situated who might be asking us, but none of them have asked us. And um, I, I, anything that we can do to help that group of volunteers out, we should. That's an integral thing to the town and uh, to, to the life of the people in the town. I understand it's not a town committee or a town agency, thank goodness, because then we would have to pay lifeguards all year long. There's, there's, there's no reason we should be responsible for their U.S. mail. They asked us to be. So what? It creates so confusion. So what? They, they, have, they have, that's what the post office is for. Uh, I think it creates confusion. We, we try really hard to separate and people misunderstand already. Allow it to come into the town, it just, it just validates that it's a town function and it's not. I don't understand why one of the other officers isn't receiving their mail. What? Treasurer doesn't want to do it anymore? Why, why are they asking us to do it? Uh, that was the reason, no, that, that the treasurer w had quit and that they had been receiving mail. I, I don't know why we would be involved in this. 
Uh, it, it does uh, raise, raise the possibility that, that people would confuse it with a town group if they're sending it to the same mailbox. Yeah, no, I, I, no way I think we should do this. That's what the post office is for. Yeah, but to get a post office box, they'd have to pay. Well, yeah, of course. What is it, $50, $60 a year? I don't know. I don't know. I'm just inclined to say yes to things that people ask that, that don't cost you any money. I don't know. No, I, I'd always be responsible for their mail. I, I don't just, I don't know that we're responsible for anything. We might lose their mail. More likely to lose their mail than their previous arrangement, maybe. But um, especially if nobody knows where to put it, if there's no box for it. Uh, I don't know. I, I just don't. I just don't see it. Why doesn't Why doesn't have a president or vice president? Why don't Why don't they receive the mail? Is there a reason? You're asking me. I don't know. I, well, you're the one that wants to do I, this. Ah, do you know why they don't want their president or vice president to receive the mail? I don't even know who the vice president or president is. I don't. I don't know either. But Let me go downstairs and I'll ask because I know someone who is. <laughs> yeah, I, I would I would chalk this up in the category of things that I'm not all that concerned about. Um, but uh, uh, to me, it was just a natural. Yeah, sure, whatever. But uh, if anybody apparently people feel otherwise, that's it. So yeah. tell them no. I don't. Yeah, well, I'm, it I'm does, really it confused does, by the request. I'm sorry, I probably shouldn't be chiming in, but I can't help. No, I love it. <laughs> it does cost you money. It does cost you money because you're wasting your town employee resources. We ah. Calls, we get, you know, you just worsen the confusion. Ah. Tom will spend time on this. We will spend time on this. The clerk will spend time on it. Everybody will be trying to deflect the fact that we're, it's not a town function. All right. Yeah, well, the hell with them then. <laughs> Sorry. Well, no, not the hell with them, but they, they should find another way to receive their mail. Yeah. All right. And we'll leave, we'll leave it at that. Okay. All right. So uh, we don't have the uh, item not anticipated 48 hours in advance. Tom, do you have an update for us? Um, just uh, something uh, very minor. Um, I actually have to... Uh, bring it up here, even though it's very minor. Um, I was uh, on a planning call this morning. Uh, Deerfield is the emergency dispensing site for vaccines. And there's some planning going on for what happens when there is a vaccine for the COVID-19 and uh, or rather for the SARS-CoV-2, the actual virus. Um, so the, the nurse, uh, Lisa White, uh, the public health nurse said that she would prefer for this, for there not to be a central site, but for each town to provide its own site so that, you know, to reduce crowding and to uh, make it easier for town residents to get to it and not have everybody go, you know, congregate at one place to get it. Uh, and these, these it's probably be a drive-by situation anyway, but, you know, there's still congestion problems. The so that, we're not expecting a, a virus for Corona for quite a while, right? The vaccine. Vaccine. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why we're worried about this. A year away. The front of the grammar school, yeah. though, the, the traffic circle that you can be at the outdoors, they can be covered by the the roof and the whatever. People can circle and drive out. You can fit a lot of cars there too. More than a anywhere long else. way away. Yeah. You don't have yeah. We'll we'll decide about this yeah. some other time. Anything else, Tom? Yeah. Nope, that's it. Okay, we have any concerns, Selectman? Any concerns no. of our Selectman? Bob? No. No? 
Philip? None that can no? be addressed no? with further conversation here tonight. Okay. Uh, I didn't see any mail. We don't have any announcements. Our next meeting is set for Monday, May 4th at 6 o'clock via Zoom. Um, there's no more business to come before the board. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. second. A second? Yes. It's a second. Philip? Yes. Okay. Aye. Up. Aye. Yes. Yes. Myself, I.